What's up, everybody? It's AJ with eTrail.com. Today, we're going to be checking out the Rhino Rack Snowboard and Ski Carrier. Now, this one's going to be able to handle two snowboards. So, one like this with the bindings down and one with the bindings up on top of it, or three sets of skis. Let's check it out. So, first off, you know, a snowboard and ski carrier are going to be to carry your snowboard and skis. Get them up out of your vehicle, make it more legroom on the inside for everybody on those trips. So, you want to put it up here on a roof rack so we have a roof rack we have the rattle rack vortex bars here it clamp clamps around the bar you have to use tools to tighten that up we'll show you how to do that later on but it's got a nice tight fit I can shake the whole vehicle back and forth so you know it's got a nice grip on there there's no rattling or anything like that down here so you don't have to worry about it being loose you didn't even see the snowboard shake at all either so you know it holds everything very well it's got a button here on the outside it's very easy to operate you just push that in right here. Now it is just kind of a smaller button than normal. There's some other ones where it comes out a little bit more. I kind of like those buttons that stick out because you're going to have gloves on or mittens or something to push in on that to pop it open. But that button is still pretty easy enough. I just use my palm to pop it up and get it out of the way. I'll do the same thing on the back one. That pops up and then opens it up. So then you can just go ahead and take the snowboard out and set it aside. We can look at the inside. We have a rubberized pad on the top and the bottom section here. It's there to protect your skis and snowboards so you don't worry about them getting scratched or damaged. I can even close my hand in there and show you. Just fine. Doesn't hurt. So it doesn't hurt my hand. It's not going to hurt the skis or snowboards. So I like that that's there. Another thing I like is when you pop it open, this stays up on its own. It's, a, it's normal with these snowboard and ski carriers, but I just like that that it does that so you don't have to Spend the time holding this up with one hand while loading it up. This is up and out of the way. Just enough to slide your skis and snowboards on there so you can shut it down. Talking about the rubberized inside here, I'm going to go ahead and measure the usable space. Just so you can have a better idea if your snowboard and skis are going to fit. Because all of them are made differently and have different widths. We have 13 inches of usable space here on the inside. So that's this entire length of this pad. So let me get that snowboard, throw it back up here so it gives you a better idea. Now to further help you out, making sure it's gonna fit with your stuff, we have a snowboard that we had in there before. That's gonna be 10 inches, so it's from here to here. And we have an inch and a half left over. So that just gives you the visual of how this actually fits in here. Now I got skis as well. So next, I'm gonna go grab all three sets of skis and get them to fit too. Now I got the skis loaded up. I'm gonna show you load up that last one. We were able to fit three sets of skis, just like it said we could. Now, again, I know all skis are different and snowboards too, but just wanted to show you what we have to work with and what we can get done too. So there's three skis loaded up. Just push down on there. Nice and tight, just like the snowboard. I can even shake the vehicle by the skis here. So you know it's got a good grip on it. Another thing to be used for is your fishing poles. So if it's the off season for skiing and snowboarding, you're going fishing. It's another way to get these poles out of the vehicle and up on the roof. Just again, more space on the inside for everybody and just less of a hassle. Another thing I'd like to point out here at the end is it can lock. Just like that, it's got the built-in lock cores. So you can lock it up. And that's nice because it protects it anybody from opening that up and getting to whatever you have in here stored, but also with it locked up like that, nobody can loosen the inside bolts there. You know, you can still mess with it here. If you have the very specific tool, I guess, you could loosen these clamps right there, but you'd have to have a very specific tool to get that to happen. Another good measurement to have would be how long it is externally. So we'll get the tape measure out and go from end to end. It's about 18 and a half inches long. So I'm giving you that measurement so you know that what else you could fit on the other side of your bar. So let's say you have a slim cargo carrier, rooftop cargo carrier you want to put up there. You can do that. If you maybe adjust these, you could probably move them further out and put this bracket on the outside here. Get maximized that crossbar spread you have if you have another accessory you want to throw on the other side. Now it also has a weight capacity of 39 pounds. So just make sure you don't exceed that when you're loading up your skis, snowboards, or fisher rods. Now we're going to go over how it clamps on to your cross rails. So it's pretty easy. You got washers and bolts it gives you. So you drop the bolts to the top, but let's set a washer in place first. We got the washer there, then drop the bolt through. Gonna do that on both sides of our clamp. 
I would recommend if you're climbing up on your roof to go ahead when you're on the ground and screw this one in first. Or at least get it started. That way it's attached like this. So when you climb up on the vehicle, this is hanging there. You don't have to worry about it falling off and holding two pieces. You can just swing that over and I will do the same thing on the back one. I'll get it hand tightened and then come back with the tool it gave us and further tighten it down. So here's the tool that comes with it. So you just use that right there on the top of the bolt and then tighten it down evenly on both sides. Just be sure not to over tighten it. It even says it right here on the clamp to not over tighten. So I just give it a couple turns on this side to get it started and then come back here on the back side and do the same thing. Kind of mirror that until it's tight, but not over tight. So the easy installation is pretty, pretty easy. You know, you still have to climb up on your roof and depending on how high that it is up and with a tool and do that, but it's not too bad. It's not like the bolts are down here. Sometimes when you have to tighten it down here, you have to worry about roof clearance and stuff like that. It's nice that you got it up here. Just a couple turns with the Allen wrench it gives you, it wasn't too bad. Now, it does work with most style crossbars. So it's got round bars, square bars, elliptical, some factory, arrow bars. It's nice that the clamp system is very versatile and works with so many different options. So it'll most likely work with whatever you got on your roof. Now there's another way you can attach it to your crossbars. If you have T-Tracks, you can take advantage of those and it's built in so you don't have to get anything extra. You don't have to order any other parts. You can see them right there. So I'm gonna start taking it apart and showing you how to convert it to that. So we're gonna go from the clamp the T-Track, so use that same Allen wrench that's in there. You're gonna see this bolt here. We're gonna loosen this. Get that loose. I can probably do the rest by hand now. This is kind of more of a, I guess, a nut than a bolt. But I'll unscrew that, set that aside. Now the bottom comes out lift off the metal clamp. You can see this is the T-Track. So we'll put it right back through the hole it came out of. I left the washer and the lock washer in place. Then put this back on top. And at least get it hand tight. That way it stays in place, and when we slide on the track, I'll go ahead and tighten it down. You were gonna to wanna to do that on both of the clamp parts. Now this one might be kind of covered up by the rubber pad on the inside. It's easy enough to peel back and put right back in. There's some of them that it's not that easy, but you can completely remove it to get in there and get to this one. Or if it's more pushed this way, it'd be the same thing. You just remove that to access these bolts a little easier. Now you could slide this back and forth to access those bolts. I just chose to remove it. You see there's a little bit of a gap there. That's what we're gonna line up with the edge here. And push that into place first. So then we line this up. The T-Track kind of turn that to make sure it slides right in there. It's pretty easily. I peeled back the rubber weather strip. It's about right there where I want it. So then I can put my end cap back on after I've tightened it down. So just pop it open. Once again, got to access these nuts on the top, but use the tool to tighten it down. It's that easy. It only took a couple turns, actually. I'm going to push this forward a little bit. There we go. I like the look of this. You can see how there's no clamp. You don't have to worry about any underhang at all. It's on there really tightly, so I like that. Again, now that this locks, and if you had the locking cap, or we do have the locking cap here, that means nobody can access it and get to the hardware, so there's no more worry about somebody undoing the clamps on you or anything like that. Once this is cap's put on, it's locked, nobody's messing with it. Where are the skis up here with it in the T-Tracks? I think the T-Track looks way nicer than the clamps on there. I understand the clamps are a little bit easier just to get on there and get going. But then again, the T-Track's pretty easy if you want to slide in there and just leave it in there. You don't want to take it off and put it back on. It's kind of permanently there and it looks sleeker and more factory. Uh, you know, I think I said that before, but 
I like the way it looks. The only thing that might be an issue now is the clearance from the roof because now it's in the T-Track. The clamp elevated just a little bit, gave it about like that much of a lift. So when I go to put the snowboard in there, we're gonna see if the bindings hit the roof now because it doesn't have that lift. We can always flip one snowboard around though so that they're up in the air, but if you got two, that might, could, might be an issue. Don't have the snowboard now that the ski carrier and snowboard carrier is in the T-Track. You can see the bindings do indeed make contact with the roof. So might not quite work out well for us on that one, but I can flip it around and it'll work just fine. But the snowboard flipped around, it's a non-issue. It fits just fine. We just wouldn't be able to carry two. Overall, I really like this ski and snowboard carrier. It's one of those things that maybe if you're on the fence about it and you only have one snowboard or a couple sets of skis, I think it's worth it if you have the bars already, if you already have that, it's definitely worth it to get that just to get it up and out of the vehicle. Making that room in there is really important. It makes everybody happier in those trips. And I think this is the way to do it, especially with all the options you have for this one, the two different mounting options. Like I said, we went over the T-Track one. This one's in there now, nice and sturdy, looks factory and there's no underhang here, so there's no clamps or something in the way, but you can't flip this snowboard on the downside, so these will hit the roof. So that's things to keep in mind, but you have options. Just use the clamps in. If you want to put the clamps on there, you get a little bit of rise out of that, you can throw those on there, then the bindings aren't a problem anymore. Or if you just want to use the skis, it works with that either way as well. I know a lot of people are in between even using these or one of the enclosed boxes, the rooftop boxes, but throw it in the fence and you don't need to carry that much stuff maybe you don't go skiing and snowboarding that often that box is really big it's nice and it protects it from the snow and the ice but you have to find a place for that when you take it off your roof too unless you're just going to leave it up there all the time so you have to have garage space for that basement space for that you have to lift that up and set it in a place these are far easier to throw them on there they don't take up that much space if you were to take them off you can store them in your garage somewhere very easily on a shelf out of sight out of mind but I think this is the way to go to carry either your three sets of skis or your two snowboards. Well, I think that does it. Thanks for hanging out, and I hope this helped.